Hi there! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create my rainbow dorset button. This button was designed for day 92 of my one button a day challenge for 2020 in commemoration of all of the lovely rainbow pictures the children here in the UK are putting up in their windows. And if you stick around, I'll show you how to turn your button into a little brooch to hold your reading glasses. So let's get started. The first thing that you need to do is cover a ring with blanket stitches. I'd advise that you watch my dorset button making tutorial, but just to give you an idea, Hold the end of the thread. I'm using a white size 8 cotton purlet alongside and then you work first a little knot and then each one will be a blanket stitch along the edge of the ring and you'll get that ridge forming from the blanket stitch. along the top edge of the ring. You can cut the thread end once that has been secured with a few stitches and then you'll carry on all of the way around. When you've gotten all of the way around you'll then turn the ridge to the back of the ring. That just gives a nice clean edge to the side. So here's the ring that I've completely covered with blanket stitches. I've then laid nine wraps for 18 spokes. So just to remind you, a wrap goes from bottom to top in the middle of the ring. So in order to do that, you, sort of, you wrap like so. A spoke is from the center out. I've just secured the center with a couple of stitches just to line everything up. I have actually then fastened off the thread and cut a new long length and fastened it to the back at the center of the button. Um, that just means I won't run out of thread because obviously having worked all of the way around you are likely to run out of thread. So now you need to work rounding back stitches in the same way as you would for a normal dorset ring button around each of these spokes and we're going to work two rows so you come up in a gap and then you come back around the spoke and back down and so that's a rounding back stitch rounding because we're going to go in a round so I'm going to work two rows and then I'll come back to you and show you the next step so there I have two rows completed and now I want to work the bottom part of the rainbow. Now in my original I chose white because it was meant to represent the white paper that all of the children are drawing their window rainbows on. So basically we need to fill in this area which is the bit of the paper that's not colored in. So we do that by working our rounding back stitches. We have to sort of change direction because we still want these ridges to be continual. So you change direction just a little bit by coming back on itself. But just make sure that what you're still doing is you're still creating the stitch over. So we're, when you see what I'm doing, I have actually changed the direction and I'm coming back towards myself. Now, obviously, if you are um, left-handed, you may, <clears throat> pardon me, be working this in opposition to how I'm actually currently working it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, and then eight, and then I'm going to come up, come back around, and now I'm working my rounding back stitches in the same way as I normally would. So that all I'm doing is filling the bottom section. Now what you may wish to do is as you get to the edges, you can also stagger them a little if you like by moving up to the next spoke and then coming back down. It's entirely up to you. So just to remind you how I'm changing direction again, I'm that's my would be my normal would be to come up here. So now I'm going to come the next one along and then double back from there. So I will carry on and I will fill this section in a little um, like a ray and I will be right back. So as you can see, I've worked back and forth and I've gone really close up to the edge of the um, ring to really fill in that space. It's a little bit staggered here, don't worry, because we'll cover that all up with clouds. We will have a join and we want to make sure that that's covered. So I'm just going to knot this off at the back. I'll just thread that through, go around my needle and draw that up creates a little knot and then I can take the thread to the center just to hold that thread so it doesn't get in my way and trim that. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to now start on the actual rainbow. Now I'm using a very fine tapestry wool for my rainbow you can use whatever threads that you like. Um, if they're finer, you'll fit more on. That's really the only thing to think about. But beyond that, absolutely doesn't matter. Just get some rainbowy colors and add them to your button. So we need to start with the inside of the rainbow the inside of the arc. So again, I'll use the thread singly, add a little knot onto the back, just trim that excess tail, and I'll add it to the center of the button. And now we're going to re work with the reverse rounding back stitch. So basically, we're going to be going over the top of the spokes. So we'll come up in some of that white and then go over two spokes and then come up again and then back over two spokes and up in the space between the two. And as you can see what that's doing is it's giving us a broad stripe of color, not the ribs, because the ribs are forming at the back, which is why it's the reverse stitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two rows of each color. Just to make sure that the color shows up a little bit because it's a very fine um, wool that I'm using. If you're using, for instance, um, embroidery stranded cotton, you could probably get away with one row, but using um, three strands. It all depends on sort of what sort of impact that you want to create. So I'm going to go right down into the white. So that I can come back up 
and then work it in a reverse fashion. But again, going over the two. Okay, so I'll carry on and I'm going to work each of the colors in exactly the same way. So I'll go through and work them and then come back to you. completed all of the colors for the arch of the rainbow and I've added on another length of the white perlay. So just to finish this off I'm going to do a regular rounding back stitch around the spokes right up to the edge just to frame the rainbow. Notice I'm just holding the color away a little bit with my fingernail. You can do this um, as many times as you need to to just fill that gap. I think on my original I actually um, had two rows because I did use a finer white thread. Now, as you reach the other side, as I say, if you're happy that your gaps are filled, you can either fasten this white off and cut it and start afresh or you can just run it through and then come up anywhere along the base of one of the um, sides of the rainbow. I'm going to unthread the needle and I'm going to add a length of the blue thread alongside the white thread, okay? And thread the needle with both of the colors. I'm just gonna take that back down again. I should have left it down at the bottom actually. So there you are, mistake in the happenings can't even remember how I did it there we are so they're both down on the same side and then the same length okay so we'll just leave that tail for the time being and go back up again and now I'm just going to work a series of French knots basically to cover this join and to become clouds you can use colonial knots you can use really any type that you want um, when I'm doing a French knot on a button, I do tend to sort of hold and work like so. And then make sure when you're going back through what you've woven, that you are going through a different section. Because if you don't, then your knot's going to pull all the way through. Once you've done your first one, you can go ahead and cut that tail at the back so it doesn't get in your way. 
don't worry if your um, French knots are, you know, how sometimes they go uneven and they go a bit wobbly. Don't worry about that because they're clouds after all. They don't have to be lovely, perfect little French knots. You just want some randomness, which helps to cover up the join of the rainbow and to create the clouds that all of the children always put in when they're doing a rainbow. And if you need to add more thread, go right ahead, add the thread for the other side as well and just work your little clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and work the clouds on the other side to finish off the button. And there we have it. One dorset rainbow button. Of course, depending on how you choose to do this, you could have more or less for the actual rainbow. You could also, of course, do the whole thing on a blue sky if you wish. It's entirely up to you. So now I'm going to show you a little extra and that's how to turn this into a little glasses holder brooch. What I've done is I have covered a second smaller ring in blue thread. I've used the wool. Um, the reason I've chosen a smaller ring is because I've chosen something that my glasses will fit into without um, too much um, play. I didn't want too big a ring. Okay, I also have a piece of felt that I've placed a brooch pin onto. I've stitched that on. Okay, now that piece of felt is to go onto the back of the actual rainbow. So it needs to be more or less the size of the back of that. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to join the two of these together. Now, because I've chosen to cover this with blue, I can either make my connection in blue or in white. I'm going to use white and I'm going to stitch through the rings around and around. So let me just thread up my needle. My apologies if the light has changed a little bit. I actually knocked over one of the lights. So I think it will be in a slightly different place. So I've just knotted that to the back and I'm going to have it. I'm going to come up at the base of my rainbow. And then I'm going to stitch the two of these together with some straight stitches. And you see, I'm just going around the rings. Now at this stage, that's not gonna be very strong. You know, you, you are saying that, you know, we wanna actually hold some glasses here. So we want to make it quite strong. So we'll put quite a few lengths of thread And then I'm going to take these and I'm going to go through the top of them and I'm going to work blanket stitches. I'm going to go through, I'm, when I get to the end there, I'm going to go around again and I'm going to come back up and I'm going to work blanket stitches in the other direction 
in between. So all the while strengthening up this join, but at the same time making it a little bit decorative as well. So it's not just some threads. And then back through the bottom ring again. And then I'm going to go to the back. And I'm just going to work some straight stitches here again to help to just add a bit of extra strength and security on the back of that. And then I'm going to take it through and I'm going to come up through to the back of this button to fasten it in place. Now, so that's what we have, and we can now stitch the brooch onto the back of this. Now I'm going to switch to a sharp needle. Uh, if I can find it, and I'm still going to use the white thread, just so that you don't sort of see it at the edges. Um, you could, of course, use white felt as well, um, which would really mean that you wouldn't see um, the stitching at all. But obviously, for the tutorial, it's nicer if you can actually see that there is some contrast. So I'm going to go through with a sharper needle, and I'm just going to take the thread through the felt, and through the stitches at the back of the button. You can also add a little bit of glue if you wish to hold the felt into place. Now I'm going to carry on stitching this because I need to bring it a little closer to me to see these little stitches and then I will show you when it's complete. Okay, so I've worked my stitches all of the way around. Come back to the beginning and I'll just show you, if you make a little knot to knot off your thread, and then you take your needle back through to come out virtually any place, and then pull that quite tight as you cut, the end of the thread will sink right back in there and be hidden. So there you have your little rainbow brooch glasses holder. You can just pop that on your top, pop your reading glasses in place and not lose them as I did last week. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, do please subscribe. There'll be plenty more coming along. Thanks very much. Bye bye.